So in this video, I'm going to show you the Skywatcher as GTI mount operating as a fully fledged equatorial mount using firmware that was released by Skywatcher today. As I mentioned previously, since purchasing this mount, I have been in contact with the developers of the SinScan app several times by email. And one of my first requests was that they consider producing firmware allowing this mount to operate in equatorial mode. And I'm happy to say that they have followed through on that request. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install the firmware, allowing this mount to be used either as an alt azimuth mount or an equatorial mount with the SinScan Pro app. I'm also going to explain the additional components you see in this video, such as the latitude base, which allows the mount to be oriented correctly for polar alignment, and the counterweight, which prevents load imbalances as the mount is rotating on its polar axis. So I wanna make it clear that this video is not a flat earth debunking video. I will be announcing another contest in the coming weeks, and the first prize is going to be one of these as GTI mounts. So this video will simply focus on downloading and installing the firmware and configuring the mount to operate in the equatorial mode. So this mount now has the new firmware installed. And if we go to the SinScan Pro app, which is available for Android and iOS devices, you will see that during the connection process, it gives you the option to connect in alt azimuth or equatorial mode. So we'll go connect. It finds the mount. We select it and we go connect. And there you can see the option. So we select equatorial mode and it is now connected in EQ mode. At this point, we are going to assume the mount is correctly polar aligned. So in the Southern Hemisphere, that camera would be facing south and elevated at the same angle as my latitude of 34 degrees here in Sydney. So the first thing we want to do is an alignment. And just for simplicity in this demonstration, I will use a one star alignment selecting Jupiter. So we'll go through that alignment process now. So it's now asking to center Jupiter and the mount is correctly aligned. So at this point, we could go and look at other objects in the sky. For example, there's Saturn. And we just sent a Saturn and confirm. And just to prove it is operating in the equatorial mount mode, we can go to the utility and look carefully at the axes. You can see that only one axis is moving. So the mount is operating correctly as an equatorial mount by tracking objects in the sky using a single axis of rotation only. And one of the best features of using the SinScan Pro app is that it enables you to control these mounts using third party planetarium software such as Sky Safari Pro. Now I'm going to show you how to configure this also. It's quite involved and 
the only way I was able to get it to work was to use two devices, one for the Planetarium software, this is an iPad Pro, and a second device for the SinScan Pro app, this is a Galaxy Tab. And the first piece of information you need is the IP address of the device running the SinScan Pro app. So we go into the Wi-Fi settings, go to Manage Network Settings, Show Advanced Options, and that IP address, 192.168.4.3, is the number we want. So remembering that IP address, we now need to configure Sky Safari Pro accordingly. Going into Settings, going into Telescope Setup, you need to select Skywatcher Sin Scan, Equatorial Go To, because we're operating in EQ mode, and for the IP address, you now enter that number, 192.168.4.3. Now your value might be different, it depends on the IP address you obtained from the device running the SinScan app. For the port number, you must use 11882. And that's in the documentation that comes with the mount. And once you've done that, click Done. And we can now connect. And you can see the small reticle is overlaying the South Celestial Pole, which is correct because the mount is now pointing directly south and elevated according to latitude. So it is polar aligned and therefore the camera is pointing towards the South Celestial Pole. Now from this point forward, we can control the mount using this app just by tapping on a target, Jupiter, and selecting go to. And you can also control the mount directly with these buttons. So let's take a look at some of the components that I'm using. Now the equatorial base that I'm using is the Skywatcher Latitude Base and mine came with this mount, the Star Adventure mount, however you can purchase it separately. The only thing you will have to do with this mount is replace the stock retaining bolt which has a large plastic head because that head gets in the way of the AS GTI mount when it's rotating. The solution? is to get an M8 bolt, which has a much smaller head. And what I actually did was use a grub screw, an M8 grub screw, just with an Allen key. And that's a very nice, neat solution. So there's no obstruction at all of that as GTI mount when it's rotating. And for the counterweight, all I have used is an M12 bolt. Now this one is 300 millimeters long and the one I'm using is 240 millimeters. That was actually long enough. However, if I put a heavier telescope, I would probably need to use the longer bolt. So that's an M12 bolt and it just screws in perfectly into this side of the head. In fact, the documentation that comes with the new firmware states that the counterweight from a Skywatcher EQ1 mount will fit perfectly. However, the bolt works fine too. Now, the counterweight I'm using here is from a small Ioptron mount, and the diameter of the shaft was too small, so I had to pad it out with some black electrical tape, and that's working fine. 
If you don't have a counterweight, it's quite easy to just use fishing lead sinkers and tape them around the base. That would be a quick and dirty method, but it would work just fine. Alternatively, you could purchase the counterweight shaft and weight from the Skywatcher EQ1 mount. So let's take a look at how to get this firmware downloaded and installed. And I'm going to try something different for this part of the presentation. So for the installation of the firmware, you must have your PC connected to the Wi-Fi network created by this mount itself. So in the past, I've been using an iPhone pointed directly at the laptop screen for many of my videos. Now, I realize that's not the best way to do it. And with almost 5,000 subs, I thought it was time to lift my game and start using a screen capture program, which has been recommended to me by numerous people already. So this part of the video is produced with OBS, and I'm going to show you where to download the software and how to install it onto the mount. So you want to go to the skywatcher.com website, click on support, and down to software and firmware. At this point, we want to go to motor controllers. And the firmware we're looking for is this one. It's called as GTI mount, right arm as EQ dual mode. So just click download and save as. I'll just save it to the desktop. And the other program you will need is the Wi-Fi motor controller firmware loader. So this one here. So they're both under this tab, motor controllers, the second one and the fourth one. So we'll download that next. Save it again to the desktop. Now at this point, we just want to unzip both of these files. And if you're using Windows 10, I recommend you just go into Properties and click Unblock first before unzipping. Now we can unzip each of those files. At this point, I have to disconnect from the internet and connect the computer to the AS GTI mount. So I now have the computer connected to the Wi-Fi network being produced by the mount. And that SSID is just called SynScan Wolfie, as you can see there. So what we can do now is open the motor controller software. And you can see it has located the IP address of the mount. And we can check the motor controller firmware version. Now that's showing 3.11 already, which is the new firmware. Ordinarily, that would be showing 3.10, which is the standard firmware that comes with a mount. So to load the new firmware, all you have to do now is browse to this folder containing the firmware on the desktop there's the firmware open and update As you can see, it's going through the update process. And once that has been completed, you just need to cycle the power on the mount.
Now, if you don't like using that firmware, you can go back to the original firmware, which is here on the Skywatcher website, version 3.10. So that's all there is to it.